Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast from javascript.info, the modern JavaScript tutorial. And at this point in time, I thought it might be good to review where we're at because the tutorial is in three distinct parts. Part one, the JavaScript language, which is a comprehensive look at JavaScript from an introduction to JavaScript, where we learn what its primary purpose in life is, and that is to provide some interactivity when a user clicks or enters information on a web page, all the way through fundamentals, code quality, discussion of the objects, functions, prototypes and inheritance, and some advanced topics such as promises, generators, and modules. Then it gets into part two, where we apply all those concepts to a web page. So the question for these authors is, at what point in time do we introduce the web page, HTML and CSS? In my opinion, because JavaScript's primary purpose is to interact with a web page, the time to introduce how it interacts with HTML and CSS is early on, because that's a satisfying thing, having JavaScript actually do something on the web page versus simply writing statements in a code editor that are then examined. So I've taken you from part one, halfway through JavaScript fundamentals in section two, and popped you down into part two, and now we are through sections 1.1 through 1.4. So we understand how the browser reads that HTML and creates the DOM tree. We understand how to move up and down in the DOM, that each element is actually a set of nodes. And we also understand how to search for a specific node with the get element and query selector method. But I thought in this screencast it might be good just to hit the highlights before we move forward and review the key concepts that I want you to know about what we've covered so far, because this tutorial is incredible. However, it is also comprehensive. And the problem with it being comprehensive is you don't need to know absolutely everything about the particular subject that's being discussed at the time it's being discussed. It's just a way of organizing the information. I think we saw that specifically when we were searching using the element and the query selector methods, the author introduced some methods that I didn't even discuss and also some concepts that I did not discuss. It's not that those methods and concepts are not important. They are. However, they're sometimes not necessary in the beginning to comprehensively cover a subject. Let's go back to the beginning and just review the key concepts that you need to know. First of all, we need to know why JavaScript was invented in the first place, and that is to provide interactivity on a web page to add up the items in a shopping cart or to validate data in a form or to provide interaction on a web page beyond a mere hyperlink. If you want to find some excellent examples of what JavaScript can do, type in javascript30.com into your browser and look through the 30 code examples with Wes Boss of things that JavaScript can do. It is free. It is fun. It is exciting. You will learn a lot about JavaScript. Provides tremendous examples of what JavaScript can do. We moved into code editors. A code editor is a place where you write your code. I have chosen Visual Studio Code for this series of YouTubes. I chose Notepad++ for my earlier series simply because it's very basic. It has excellent color coding and there's not a lot of other features that get in the way. Visual Studio Code has far greater IntelliSense it intelligently senses where you're at and gives you some good suggestions. But again, when you're learning this in the first place, sometimes those suggestions can get in the way. What you don't need to write JavaScript, however, is an IDE, an integrated development environment, such as Visual Studio 2017 or Visual Studio 2019, because you don't need the compiler and server features of an IDE to learn JavaScript. And why? Because JavaScript is executed directly in the JavaScript engine, which is a component of every modern browser. So if you have a code editor, no matter what it is, and you have Chrome or Firefox, you've got what you need to both write JavaScript and run JavaScript. The next lesson was on the developer console, which we find in all modern browsers. I'm in Chrome here by right-clicking a empty spot on a web page and choosing inspect. It has several different tabs. The two tabs that we are working on in this series are the Elements tab, which display the HTML elements in a hierarchy of parent, child, 
elements and show you the attributes of those elements, the declarations that created those styles, and the box model that shows you the content adding border and margin on the selected element. You can even go into these styles or this HTML and modify it. Everything in the console is interactive and temporary. As soon as you refresh your page, you will go back to the original HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. On the console tab is where we work with our JavaScript. It displays JavaScript errors, which is fantastic. When I first started learning about JavaScript, we had no such tool to show us our JavaScript errors, so we were picking through line by line, trying to figure out where we had capitalized a variable name in an inconsistent way, and it was a very tedious process to debug our JavaScript. The console now is my best friend because it shows me my JavaScript errors, and it also allows me to test out different statements so that I can examine the objects or variables in a web page. At that point, we moved into the specifics of JavaScript, and we built our first little JavaScript script inside of a web page, Hello World. At that point in time, you probably said to yourself, wow, I need to have great HTML and CSS skills in order to learn JavaScript, because after all, that's what JavaScript does. It manipulates the HTML content and CSS. And if you said that to yourself, you were correct. The key things that you need to learn about HTML are elements. You need to know what an element is, both a paired element and an empty element, such as the meta tag, as well as attributes. Attributes are always in the opening tag of a paired tag, and they further describe the tag. For example, this href attribute tells us the name of the file that we're linking to, and this rel relationship attribute tells us that the relationship of this file is a style sheet. So those two keywords, element and attribute, must be part of your system because those are the two key HTML terms that we're going to use throughout HTML and also reference in JavaScript. In CSS, we have three keywords. We have selector, and that's the part before the curly brace that selects what we're going to style. We have property, and the only two properties we see in this style sheet are background color of the item and the text color, and then declaration. The declaration is commonly called the style. That's the entire property and its property value. Those three words are key to your CSS terminology. And then we started getting more into JavaScript and learning the syntax, the structure, how statements are written. We learned how to declare a variable with let and const and the old bar. And we learned that JavaScript is loosely typed. There are strings, there are numbers, there are booleans, and those variables can morph from a string to a number and be reassigned. And that's something that's different than most modern programming languages that have strict typing, where we have to declare a variable as an int, an integer, or a char, a string. We also learned that behind the scenes, sometimes our data is actually converted. For example, if we try to multiply a string two by a number three, that string two will be converted into a number, and the result will be six. So the language is trying to help us make sense of our statements. The problem with that is sometimes a operator, such as the plus sign, can be used in a different way with strings and with numbers. And we learned about that as well. Attempting to bring out the key things that you need to know in order to move forward, because it is my firm belief that if you have the fundamentals down solid, you can teach yourself many of the intermediate and advanced topics. And I also want to touch upon some JavaScript keywords. We've talked about object, which is a storage container for properties and methods. And while you can create custom objects in JavaScript, just like in any other language, because we're working with a web page, we have these very robust, rich, built-in objects. We have the window object and the document object to work with. So we learn to work on those pre-built objects far earlier, typically, in JavaScript land than we learn how to work with our own custom objects. The document is the web page itself, and once we start manipulating the document, then we start getting some tangible projects going. So I always am trying to drive the bus to manipulating the document because I believe that's where the satisfaction comes in. We also learn these words property and method. 
A property is simply one characteristic of an object, such as the background color of the body or text value of a paragraph. And we also learn the keyword method. A method is something an object can do, and it's also called a function. We're going to be touching upon methods and functions much more deeply as we go on, but realize that those two words are really used interchangeably. When they're built in methods, such as the alert method on the window, which gives us prompts, or the log method of the console, we often call them methods. When we create them ourselves, we use the function keyword. We often call them functions. But method and function are used pretty much interchangeably in this tutorial. Those are the key things I want you to be solid on before we move forward. If they're not, review those YouTubes and also go to my JavaScript 101 series of YouTubes, which handles this whole subject of JavaScript more from a web page perspective. But because JavaScript.info is such a wonderful, organized, thorough, and comprehensive look at JavaScript, I'm going to continue to march through these tutorials, and we'll just keep on peeling this onion together. Thank you.